Good morning. It's uh, 9 a.m. here in San Diego, so we'll begin the webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Today's webinar is on the subject of homology modeling using ICM Pro. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to either uh, type the questions in the panel in your GoToWebinar uh, software that you've downloaded, or you can, um, at the end of the webinar, you can raise your hand and I can open your mic so I can hear your question. Uh, my name is Andrew Ori, so if you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to email or call. If you have not done this already, but um, you can uh, request a copy of ICM Pro, a 30-day license key, uh, you need to go to our webinar at uh, molsoft.com slash support site, download ICM Pro, the full package, and then open the software and you'll see a 12-character host ID. Just email that to me and then I can send you a key which will activate the software. Uh, ICM runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So today's webinar topics include how to read in sequ your sequence information into ICM for your query, so how to build for the model you want to build, and then how to um, search for an appropriate uh, template to build that model. And then uh, you can then, ha then I'll be t showing how to make an alignment between your query sequence and the sequence of the 3D template that you've downloaded from the Protein Data Bank. And then I'll show you how to build the model and then how to analyze the quality of the model that you've built. So homology modeling and other modeling will also be uh, covered in the in the following in the series that we're we're in at the moment in the webinar series. Um, so there are other topics we'll cover such as multi-template modeling and editing a model, how to uh, model loop regions, how to graft a, a model a loop from one protein to another, how to optimize those loop regions, and then we're moving on to how to predict the effects of a mutation. Uh, on ligand binding, on stability, on protein-protein binding, and uh, peptide binding. And then we'll finish up with um, how to uh, use uh, known ligands uh, to model the pocket. But in today's webinar, we're just concentrating on solely on homology modeling, building a model of your query sequence um, based on a template. Uh, just a shameless plug, uh, a couple of years back, uh, Ruben Abagai and our company founder and I, uh, we uh, edited a book on homology modeling and it covers basically, uh, it's lots of great chapters from experts in the field, uh, from uh, alignments to, to force fields, uh, to ligand guiding modeling, for example, uh, and how to uh, analyze your model. So it's, it's useful, I can send PDFs of any of these chapters if you if you email me. All of the webinars are saved on YouTube, so you can watch it at a later date if you're interested. So just a, a slide quickly about Molsoft. Uh, we're located in uh, San Diego in California. Uh, our company founder is Ruben Abagayan, and Max Totroff is our principal scientist, and Eugene Rausch is our principal developer. Uh, you may be wondering what ICM stands for. ICM stands for Internal coordinate mechanics. We use internal coordinates rather than Cartesian coordinates and you can read more about those in, in these papers here. So today's topic, homology modeling. You have a query sequence, which you can see here, and the idea is to take that query sequence and go to the PDB and find a template from which, which has good sequence identity from which you can build your model. Once you've found that template, uh, you can copy uh, the align, you can, super, you can thread the, your query sequence onto your structure and then uh, predict uh, loop regions, for example, the confirmations of the loops, the side chains, and then fully optimize the structure in, um, in our force field and uh, using the bias probability Monte Carlo method, uh, which you can which was published in 1994 uh, by Ruben and Max Totroff here at Molsoft. 
and then once you've built your model you can predict how reliable that model is in certain regions and how and and flag regions where there may be problems you know for example where there's no homology in the loop regions for example there are many uh, success stories in ICM uh, you can go to our website and in modeling success stories in ICM using ICM and uh, you can go to our website to, to read those here I uh, just wanted to highlight one interesting example uh, back in uh, this is published in uh, Trends in Pharmaceutical Sciences. The story, the story, so, uh, the the other papers um, are in uh, are available as well. But, so basically, uh, ICM was used to um, predict the active uh, state of this GPCR uh, using uh, modology modeling and also guided ligand guided modeling. And uh, the accuracy of that model was later, a couple of years later, was actually shown to be highly accurate between 0.8 angstroms and 1.7 angstroms to the crystal structure that was solved uh, after that, after the models were published. So there's, pub, there's papers on the, pub, on the models as well as this um, summary of this story uh, in trends in pharmaceutical sciences. So it's just one example, but you can read others here. So in ICM we have direct access to uh, sources of sequences for your query sequence. So uh, you can uh, type in a Uniprot ID and it will load that sequence into ICM. Uh, you, can, you can search ProSite, which is a, a database of protein domains, families and functional sites, as well as uh, PFAM, uh, which is a, a curated uh, protein family database. So you can download alignments from, from these uh, uh, databases and sequences from here. So in this, in this webinar, we're going to go through an example. We're going to model uh, GPR120, which is a member of the Rhodopsin family of GPCRs. So it has uh, seven transmembrane helices. Uh, the Uniprot code for this uh, protein is FFAR4 uh, underscore human. And GPR120 is an interesting target uh, because it's uh, a potential target for obesity drugs. It mediates the anti-inflammatory and insulin sensitizing effects of um, omega-3 fatty acids. And um, a lack of GPR120 equals a reduced fat metabolism. So it's a useful target. It's an interesting target. So how do we load that that's into ICM? So if you have ICM open, uh, you, should ha you should get a, 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 see a window here. Uh, this is the ICM graphical user interface. So we can uh, load that GPR120 sequence. We, we see we have two, to two tabs here, one called search. We need to click on that search tab and um, go to Uniprot. And enter the Uniprot code FFAR4 underscore human, like that. And then click on the uh, binoculars button, which is the search, runs the search. And then you'll see a table. Uh, one column has the uh, link directly to the Uniprot site. If you want to click on that link, it will open up the Uniprot website. Uh, another column has the other names, which is quite useful, uh, synonyms for this protein. Uh, sequence as well here. Um, but to load this sequence into ICM, we just double click on this table. If you double click anywhere on the table, it will load the sequence into ICM. And you'll see that in the ICM workspace here that you now have another uh, section called sequences and our sequence is loaded here. You can expand this sequence here to, uh, to see the full sequence. Uh, and also it's it's transferred over information um, annotation from the Uniprot as well. So you have um, information about where the transmembrane helices are, for example, uh, some other uh, information as well from mutations and other things in, in the uh, 
in the sequence. And any conflicts and variants are, are listed here. So anything that's in the, in, in the annotation part of Uniprot is also transferred. So this is useful when you make an alignment. You can propagate this information onto the alignment as well. Okay. So the next step, we have our query sequence. So our next step is to try and find a template. So we downloaded the query sequence. And inside ICM, there's the option to run a blast search. You can blast search your sequence against uh, Uniprot, the whole Uniprot, or more useful, useful in our case, we want to uh, blast a sequence against sequences from the protein data bank to find any proteins that may have uh, similarity, uh, sequence identity to our, our query sequence. So the quality of the model is highly dependent on the sequence identity between the query and the template. Uh, general rule of thumb, although this varies, in, is that if you have 50% uh, identity, the model is going to be reasonably reliable. Uh, 30 to 50% error, uh, identity, you're likely to see errors. Uh, errors will be more evident, uh, particularly like in the loop regions and such like that. And below 30%, you get into what they call the twilight zone, where there's going to be uh, multiple errors. So, uh, but you need to be careful as well when you choose your template because you need to make sure the template is in the form that you're interested in. Uh, for example, is it active, active state, inactive state? Is it ligand bound? So all these considerations need to be made. And you may have an overall sequence identity that's in the twilight zone of minus th uh, uh, less than 30%. Uh, but you, but there may be good homology in the region that you're most interested in. You know, for, the, for example, the binding pocket may be. Uh, better conserved. So having said that, uh, we, we're we using an example where um, as sequence homology is, sequence identity is very low. Uh, it's, it's very low in all GPCRs that we're modeling. So we're, we're, we're modeling the GPR120 in this example. Uh, but the good thing is they all share a common structural core, which is the seven uh, transmembrane helices. So they they have good um, structural identity, but relatively poor sequence identity. Another useful thing for modeling GPCRs in our example is that uh, for each helix, there's a, a motif that's generally conserved in, in family. This is the these are the motifs that are conserved in family A uh, GPCRs. So uh, we can use these motifs to uh, modify the alignment to make sure that, for example, in the helix three, there's this quite famous dry motif that is uh, fully con usually fully conserved. So you can use these motifs to, to, to guide your your alignment to the template. So even though in this in most GPCRs the identity is very poor, um, reasonable models can be can be made. So to do a blast search in ICM, we have our sequence already loaded, which we did earlier. Then we need to go back to the search tab and go to uh, NCBI Blast here in the search tab. We need to enter the name of the sequence we want to blast, and that's FFAR4 underscore human. And then we press uh, the uh, binoculars button here. Okay, so that takes a, a minute or so to run. In anticipation, I have a ready-made. Um, so when you run that, you will see, you'll get a table here of of the hits. So, okay, so it's finished in in in, in my one. Just, but this is a, a ready-made example. So you have the sequence identity here. You can sort it by sequence identity. You have here the accession, the PDB accession number, uh, three, the four um, to five X, for example, five X three three here. Uh, you have the, so this, this tape, this kind of gives you um, a, this, this uh, plot here kind of gives you a, on the left-hand side, it has the PDB code. 
and it has how well the coverage is of that sequence of this PDB structure compared to your sequence. So your sequence from residue zero. We have um, in our query sequence we have 377 amino acids, and so you can see which ones uh, cover uh, the whole protein very well. Some only in certain sections. Okay, so you need to, and you can also see the alignments here in the in the ICM in the in this column. You can you can load those alignments and look at, look at them more closely. Just click on load, and you can see the the alignment here. Okay. So in in many uh, modeling cases, uh, your the first hit with the best identity is going to be the model that you choose, uh, the, the protein you choose as the template. In in this example, uh, we also need to be careful because we want to make sure we're modeling the same. Uh, it's a bit difficult because we have it's GPCRs, so the sequence identity is very poor. Uh, so you can use uh, other approaches to find the template, a good template. You can also go to uh, the PFAM database and load all the family GPCRs, uh, family A GPCRs. So if you go to file, load, and go to PFAM, uh, sorry, ProSite, sorry, ProSite is the one, uh, ProSite alignment. Uh, this will load up all the GPCR uh, family A uh, sequences and align them for you. And you will see it takes a while to download from, from the ProSite website, so I've done that already. And so you will see a a big alignment of all the this is all the G, all the GPCR 2,500 sequences, all fully and carefully aligned in the ProSite database. So it shows you where the where the um, conservation is. You also have this tree, so you can find your query sequence here and see in which uh, branch it falls into. And in some cases, with a combination of the uh, blast search and also this um, this alignment in GP in the case of GPCRs, uh, you can find a, a good template. And you'd want to find one that's relatively close to your query here, as well as gives a good identity here in the blast search. Uh, for other proteins, as I mentioned, you're probably going to get a nice hit or a good hit in the blast search. You don't have to worry too much about uh, trying to find other templates. So, um, once you've found your template, and, and in this case, um, it takes a while to find you. You need to. You may want to use multiple templates, and uh, and we, we're looking for a, also looking for a, pro uh, a GPCR in the active state in order to uh, design agonists for our GPR120. So that's another consideration. So in our case, the uh, the, the template we're going to use is. Uh, a beta-2 adrenergic receptor uh, template. So to load that uh, template in, we need to search the PDB for, for that. So you have the you have the accession number here. We just read that accession number in. So we go to to load that structure. We would go to PDB search in the search tab here. Just going to show you here, yeah. and enter uh, the code. So the code three P zero G is the PDB code. Okay. So the PDB search, and then press the search button here. Three P zero G in this case. I'm just going to uh, go to Windows default layout just to clear and clean this up a little bit. I don't need this alignment, so I'm deleting it. And so we window. Okay, so when we read in uh, 3P0G, I'm just going to delete these other uh, sequences because we don't need those either. Yeah. So at the moment we have our query sequence, FFAR for human, and our, and our protein structure here. So we've read the protein structure in. Uh, we can see that it contains uh, three molecules, 
the the, pro, the GPCR, the uh, transmembrane region in blue, an agonist bound, so this beta two adrenergic receptor, and also a um, it's like a, a nanobody uh, which is used to stabilize the protein uh, for crystallization. This B chain here, so it's kind of irrelevant for us. We don't interest in that. Okay. So. In order to build the model, we need to extract the sequence of our template and align it with the query sequence to, to make the alignment in order to, to build the homology model. So in the, in, when you read in the PDB, you can take any PDB sequence from, the, from any chain that is an amino acid chain. You can just right click on the amino acid chain, chain A, and choose uh, the option extract sequence here so you right click choose extract sequence just go OK so now in the section of the uh, sequences we have uh, our query sequence FFAR4 underscore human and we have our template 3P0G underscore A sequence so to align these two sequences to make the, t the model, we double click on one, double click on the other. If you want to make a multiple other al sequence alignment, if you had other sequences, uh, you just hold control and, and select them. Then we right click and choose the option align sequences. Right click, align sequences. And now you can see that we have our alignment on, on the bottom of the screen. So I just want to just talk quickly about the different alignment methods. So inside ICM there's um, a variety of different methods for making the alignment. And we also have uh, different comparison matrices and there's also tools for uh, structure prediction, secondary structure prediction, which is kind of outside of this uh, webinar at the moment. So you can you can toggle between different alignment methods if needed. Uh, when you have your alignment, you can see it in the bottom here. So the alignment is fully interactive with the structure. So uh, you can, for example, select a region here and that selection hopefully you can see is propagated to uh, the sequence. So you can see a selection here. Likewise, you can make a selection in the alignment here, and that's propagated to the structure. There's a whole webinar on how to use these sequence alignments um, on our YouTube channel, but I was going to show you some basic stuff that is useful for homology modeling. So uh, one thing we could do is to color the structure by the alignment. So um, you can change the coloring of the alignment by clicking on this hammer button and that displays, uh, you can show it for example, full conservation, um, which might be useful in this case. Uh, secondary structure, uh, you can by just by conservation or um, there's a variety of other different, you can use your own coloring schemes. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use consensus strength. So Residues that are semi-conserved, you know, similar, uh, fully conserved are in green, uh, semi-conserved are in, in yellow. So we can color the, the ribbon by, color ribbon by, go to display tab, the structure, the, the template structure we're modeling onto is, is shown in ribbons, so we can color by and then choose alignment. And then you can see the, the coloring is propagated, so you can see where your structure is um, is fully conserved, uh, where, where the green is fully conserved and, and yellowish is semi-conserved. You can also do the same for the uh, side chains, for example, around the ligand. And I think in this case, the um, side chains are, are pretty, uh, they're not very well conserved. Uh, but we have structural similarity, but not sequence similarity. So you can do the same color. You can color anything by the alignment. Yeah. 
So you can see we, we only really have this one uh, tryptophan that is fully conserved in the binding pocket. But that's uh, the that's because we're, we're modeling uh, GPCRs. So if you want to, so when you're modeling a GPCR, for example, or any other protein for that matter, we need to be really careful with the alignment and we need to double check uh, where the uh, where we're putting gaps and where we're um, where we have um, insertions or deletions between the template and the query sequence so one useful thing uh, is shows you um, you can show the secondary structure for, a, for from the PDB so these helices this is the these red represent um, alpha helix these are non canonical helices so you can see in helix 1 for example we have uh, very reasonable conservation and I think this is the, the motif for helix 1 I need to double check so it's pretty well conserved um, you can see in other parts of the uh, protein we have a conserved uh, disulfide bond which is good this is the, um, the, the disulfide bond if you click on it it should take us to that region this is the disulfide bond in the extracellular region and those cysteines here and here are fully conserved this is between in extracellular loop uh, 2 so uh, if you want to edit the alignment and in this case uh, you, you do need to do that because we have some gaps and everything uh, but just for, for speed I'm not going to edit the whole thing but you can edit an alignment by selecting a region I'm just going to show you so you, you click and drag over a region you want to edit and then you can use the cursor keys to shift that region so you can move it move gaps uh, in and out and just by selecting closing the gap so in this case we need to be careful we don't have any insertions inside the helix and we need to go back to that slide and look at the the motifs that are fully conserved and make and double check each helix to make sure that those uh, motifs are, are fully conserved between our query and our template uh, sequence so in the alignment you can also uh, show uh, the profile which is sometimes useful especially when you're looking for a motif so it's probably more useful actually in a fully in a very large multi uh, sequence alignment but um, in this case it's, it's fine okay so we have our alignment with our protein um, I just want to also show you for example um, if you wanted to select the neighbors around the ligand you select right click choose neighbors um, just go OK and that selects the residues around the pocket so you can change the coloring or the, the display and then those and then that selection is also propagated to your alignment so uh, we can say uh, propagate to all sequences and then there's a an option to highlight and you can see the flashing um, red shows you these residues that are just around your ligand binding pocket so you can see the conservation or you can just say invert selection uh, just undo that just say invert selection and hide and then you can just see exactly the residues in your binding pocket only and you can clearly see the, the fully conserved ones the cysteine and the tryptophan so there's a number of different tools you can use to um, to look at the alignment. This is a separate webinar completely. If you, if you want to look online, uh, you can see that. Okay. So we're basically now ready to to make the the homology model. I'll go back to the this uh... so I just wanted to mention that as I showed that this alignment is fully interactive with 3d structure so for example you can make a surface and you can propagate this coloring to that surface 
Okay, so now we're ready to, to make the model. So we have all the components we need. We have the template structure downloaded. We have the extracted the sequence from the template. We've made the alignment shown here. And we've edited the alignment and we've been very careful about certain regions and, and we can we can also flag, you know, where there's big insertions that these won't be modeled probably. So we go to homology and then there's a menu and then you have different options here. If you just want to make a quick rough and ready model, uh, you can choose this option, but I'm I'm not gonna show you show you that. If you want the, the option what you, you need is to, if you're making a proper uh, model that you're going to use for docking or other studies, um, you need to use the full model builder. So we click on the full model builder. And you can see there's two tabs. There's one called single chain and multiple chain. So in this webinar, we're going to concentrate on single chain. We're not building any oligomers or any uh, antibody, multi-chain antibodies, for example. That, that's going to be covered in the next uh, webinar. So we're just going to use single chain. So uh, the sequence is um, shown here. This is our, you need to find your query sequence. If you've got multiple sequences loaded into ICM, you, need to, you can use the drop-down button to find the one you want to use. And then the 3D template, it's uh, 3P0G. This is the ICM command line uh, language. It's A underscore 3P0G dot A. This means the A chain of the object 3P0G. So that's our template. Uh, you can here not make the alignment yourself uh, and just let ICM build an alignment for you uh, based on the structure. A structure guided alignment uh, but in this case we've already built our alignment so we can just use the drop down button and choose our alignment if you have, so our alignment is called ALN and that's the alignment here okay so um, if, if you check here trip trim to template uh, this will uh, this will, will mean it won't make any kind of model for your regions such as this N terminal here where there's no, let's uh, say so this C terminal here where there's no, uh, there's no actual template for your, for your model. So it will, it won't make, it won't try and make a model for this region here, for example. And same with the N terminal, because there's no template, it will, will not, it will not uh, use that. You can check trim, trim to template if you want to, which is probably a good idea. Um, these margins, insertions, deletions, it gives ICM some leeway in order to uh, build the best uh, model in terms of in adding insertions and deletions. These default values are, are reasonable uh, values to, to keep. Uh, we're going to cover oligomers uh, another time, so it's not the case. And you can also keep uh, the ligand in, in your template inside the model. So uh, when ICM is optimizing the model, it will see the ligand uh, inside the model, so it will it will keep that pocket kind of open. It won't change the. So if you imagine uh, when you build the model, you're you're also optimizing the side chain. So um, if you have a ligand there, it will prevent you know certain orientations of the side chain. It will pretty stop the pocket from collapsing or being closed. So it's sometimes a useful option, especially if you have a a, a, a ligand bound. So uh, to tell ICM to do that, you would need to select the ligand. So to select the ligand, in this case, uh, you double click. And you see, you should see in the ICMs in the, in the 3D display that the, uh, the ligand is selected. It has these green crosses. Um, but we, it's asking for what we call a, an orange, or you see the orange cross, not a green cross. Uh, so it gives it's another selection, another level of selection. So to, to make it orange crosses, you click on this orange, uh, green to orange selection button here. So this enables you to have multiple selections, basically. And now you can see that it's it's noticed that you've made that selection and you have one molecule as your ligand or, or cofactor. So we have a, 
in our case our template has an agonist bound so we're going to use we can use that okay so the next step uh, is also it's important so here's uh, we recommend that you choose the option quick to test first and that will see whether you, know, you, you this will basically thread the backbone onto your template and um, you without any optimization steps so it's useful just to check that everything is looking uh, good and um, that the model is reasonable so you would run quick test then there's some other option then you can come back to homology and then full model builder and get this window again and then run the simulation uh, you can choose just to refine side chains uh, which might be a good option if you've got very good sequence identity uh, or you can choose to run side chains and loops which is going to take a little bit longer because it's going to optimize all the loop regions or you can just choose full refinement and it will do do everything uh, which is a good option to choose and then you have the uh, so it, but it takes a long time to run so you may maybe a day maybe a day of, of simulation or more uh, depending on the size of your protein uh, you can um, change the effort um, but this is the so we use um, the bias probability Monte Carlo method and the effort is the represents the length of the simulation uh, you can actually lower this a little bit to maybe 0 0.5 and that will speed up your your simulation and then you can just press OK and it will run your your docking your, your modeling so when you press OK I don't, it takes a while to run so I'll just do a quick test one and just go OK so you'll see when you run it that you should see a progress bar at the bottom here here in the corner um, you should also see at the top it should say one background job at the very top of this screen where it says uh, one BGRND job so you know your job is running okay so that's finished so you get a you'll get a, a protein you'll get your model shown here um, so some of the uh, this is a very quick model so it's very rough and ready so you need to go back and, and, and run the full model builder so I have done that in a uh, yet yeah, last night I set it running and the results are here in this uh, structure here so we have our model the template and the original sequences that we used so once you have your model it's important to uh, double check the model for any problems and there's two tools uh, that are useful for that you can generate the Ramachandran plots and also uh, protein health which I'll talk about later there's also tools for calculating the RMSD so you can calculate the RMSD between your your model and the template that you used uh, you can also calculate contact areas show surfaces you can also use things like the ICM pocket finder uh, but they're embedded in ICM to, to look at the pockets of your model as well and you can also look at protein protein interaction sites but for, for this uh, webinar the, the two key tools are the Ramachandran plots and the protein health so the protein health basically will flag uh, regions of your protein where they're the energy of your of your side chains or the backbone are very poor so you um, so the method uses a short uh, energy refinement um, it's based on the statistics from the PDB of the energy distributions of the amino acid residues so looking at high resolution structures in the PDB and it will flag uh, the interaction energy of each residue with the whole protein structure and 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 look at the the energy of each um, residue and compare with those normalized um, deep um, en energies that are found in the PDB uh, so so it will flag uh, potentially incorrect regions of your of your model so uh, 
you'll see anything that strays that where the energy is particularly poor will be flagged as shown in red and blue regions are, are, are okay. So how do we do that in ICM? So we have our final model here and of our um, GPR120. So to look at the, the protein health of this, we go to tools and all those other tools I mentioned, RMSD and all that are in the tools analysis menu shown here. And so we go to tools, analysis, oh sorry, actually it's in protein health, <laughs> uh, in 3D predict. So you go tools, 3D predict, and choose protein health. And then it asks you um, which objects you want to analyze for uh, health. And obviously we're going to look at the, the model that we made. So it's uh, choose the model. And we want the color by energy. And this is some, uh, this default uh, parameter is a cutoff. Um, we just go OK. And then we get a plot here of normalized energy against each of the residues in our protein. And uh, you can see blue and uh, green coloring is the energy is fine. There's no problem. We do have one a few. These, this four, anything over seven is usually considered to be problematic. So we have one residue where we have some issues. This isoleucine uh, four one one four seven, and uh, you can probably, I think it's probably this one here. So you can select it. If you double click here, it should. should take you to that residue. But we can see it quite clearly, it's this red region here. There may be a clash or some other poor geometry. Yeah, there's definitely some issues. So if you have some localized issues like this, uh, you can you could try and remake the model or go back to the alignment and see why this is a problem. Uh, but some issues can be uh, fixed uh, manually by just selecting the residues that are uh, poor. And then you can just right click and choose to, um, advanced and optimize side chain. So this will do another optimization. And you can see the, hope you can see the uh, residues uh, sampling uh, the energy. Uh, using the bias probability Monte Carlo method and you, you can see they're, they're interacting each other like dancing with each other uh, trying to fix that region so you can try and fix it uh, manually here if, if there are particularly egregious problems you may need to remake the model completely um, some things might not be fixed by the way you have your your alignment so I'm not sure if this is if we go 3d predict protein health um, go okay uh, we can check whether some of this, actually we didn't include this one, but the, 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 this just showed uh, the way you do it. So you right click, you select the residues you want to optimize, um, right click on them, advanced, and then optimize side chains. Okay. Uh, another way to look at, um, analyze the quality of your model would, would be to look at the uh, Ramachandran plot. So to do that, you go to Tools, Analysis, and then we have uh, Ramachandran Plot Interactive. Uh, you can click on there. It's asking you for which um, selection. You go OK. And then you have your Ramachandran Plot. You can select, click on here, and it will take you directly to that residue of, of interest. There's any outliers? You can you can look at them, shown here. So it's got the sci-fi angles plotted by default. There are other plots here, um, the omega angles as well. So you can use this to, to analyze the quality of your model. Okay. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and for your interest in the web webinar. Uh, so we're going to move on next coming weeks on some more advanced topics. So we've, we've built that model, uh, but there may be 
regions that we need to be very careful with, for example, the loops. So I can sh we'll show you how to, to model uh, loop regions. Uh, we've built a model, but we may want to use multiple templates to build that model. So next week we will be covering uh, multi-template modeling. And uh, we will, uh, we will, the one after that would be predicting the effect of a mutation. So we can make a model, then we can make mutations in that model, and then predict the effect of those mutations on uh, protein stability, ligand binding, and and protein-protein uh, interactions. And then we'll finish with a scenario whereby we have uh, you can either have a mod protein model, homology model, or a crystal structure, and then you want to model the pocket using ligands that you know bind. So to, to sculpt that pocket, uh, you can use um, ligand-guided 